All right, everyone, welcome to the free agency and draft edition of Hurricane Review. And today we're going to be looking at, let me just go up to cap friendly here. Sorry about this. I had it pulled up and then uh, YouTube refreshed. So give me one second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, my cat resumed this video here. All right, we're good to go with this Hurricane Review Edition. Sorry about that. I mean, I know it wasn't a lot of time for you guys, but still. So Carolina right now, they kind of killed it with the free agent frenzy. They did overpay, but the term for me counterbalances the fact that they overpaid. I'm actually very excited. There have been issues about this team that I felt they've needed to cover for. And I feel like a lot of it they did. So let's get started with the defense. Bringing in Dmitry Orlov was a very good move. Good defensive defenseman. Is definitely going to slot into the top four. Left-handed. Carolina needed a left-handed defenseman. And we're not going to talk about the draft that much because they did basically nothing. So this is mostly going to be Hurricanes free agent review. But I'll cover the draft real quick after... Well, not after, before. I'll cover the draft right now. They played it safe, wanted to keep their first-round pick. If they couldn't get much for their first-round pick, I agree with that decision. If it's like, oh, Eric Carlson for a first, maybe not. But if they were in on Eric Carlson, I don't think they're going to get him anymore. But the rumor was they were in one of the teams in on Eric Carlson. The ask for Eric Carlson without the retained salary is really high to bring in. And I think Carolina got the next best thing from Eric Carlson. And then the draft, they kept their first overall pick, kept all their picks, added to their prospect pool. Makes sense without an AHL team. I don't know what they're going to do with those prospects right now without a team where they can focus on their players' development. But that remains to be seen. So, yeah. Now we are back to free agency. Dmitry Orlov was a big move. That's probably the better player Carolina got. We'll cover the other issue. But Carolina brings in Dmitry Orlov, which I like. It's going to break up. Even though they're both good defensemen, it breaks up the pair I was very critical of in the conference final in Brett Pesci and Brady Shea. They've worked well together two years ago. This year, not as much. So... Yeah, Brady Shea is going to be in the top six. I'll cover the entire depth chart in a minute, but that really works. 7.75 for two years is a lot, but it's only two years, and the cap's going to jump not this coming season, but the one after that. I think we're in the new season, but it's not going to cover this season. It's going to cover the next season. The cap is going to jump, so that contract becomes a lot cheaper pretty quickly. And it's only for two years, so they probably can get him cheaper next year. Or he gets the same amount with the less cap. And Carolina maybe doesn't even need to re-sign him. We shall see. Because that's two seasons away. And so that adds to the defensive pair. We'll talk about what that means, speculating on what Carolina's other move could be. But as for depth, one thing I think Carolina's lacked in the past two seasons is sandpaper. And Carolina went out and they got sandpaper in this offseason by bringing in Michael Bunting. He's an asshole on the ice. That's what Carolina has needed. Carolina needed to bring in some assholes. And they got it in Michael Bunting. He's nice sandpaper. Going to be a good top nine forward for Carolina moving forward. And I really like the move. There is some other things that I'll cover that Carolina needs to improve on. But just to go over the depth chart now. Uh, for the first line in the depth chart, this isn't going to be the lines all year. Lines fluctuate too much for that. Um, I have Teravine and Aho Jarvis. Natchez, Kuk, and Niemi, Svechnikov is probably going to be the baseline. I do put Svechnikov higher up in the depth chart, but Svechnikov is a left winger. So on the depth chart, I think um, you just swap Teravine and is like how it works on the depth chart. But yeah third line you have Michael Button, Jordan Stahl, Michael Bunting, not Butting, Jordan Stahl and Steven Nason. Very good fourth line. Nason is the grit that we have. Oh, Jesper Faust ahead of Steven Nason. So Jesper Faust is ahead of Steven Nason. Martinuk, Drury, and Nason there. Jesper Faust is Michael Button, Jordan Stahl, and Faust on the third line. Fourth line is Martinuk, Jack Drury for now, and Steven Nason. 
So, and then goalies, it is Anderson and Ranta. It looks like they're not going to give Kochetkov a start to be a solid backup goalie to get 30 NHL games in. He's going to have another year in the minors. What minor team that is, who knows? That's a topic for another video with the Chicago deal falling apart. I think they should put a team in Greensboro, but I live 30 minutes away from the Greensboro Coliseum, so I'm very biased in that. AHL team I'm talking about here for what Carolina could do to counterbalance that. Video for another time. So, Kachekov going to get another year starter in the minors. But, that's what Car and Carolina's going to bring in Tony D'Angelo. So, a lot of people are saying with Tony D'Angelo, maybe this means Brett Pesci's on his way out. Because he's a UFA, their contracts are pretty, like, coming close to an end here. But... I hope it's not the case. Brett Pesci has been good in Carolina for longer. Solid player. I look at it. Brady Shea, he's becoming a UFA. I think this is Brady Shea's last year as a Carolina's defenseman. That's going to free up $5.2 million in cap space. And instead of bringing in free agents, that's going to allow time for Ajo to get his extension in. And when's Ajo? Yeah. And eventually Jacob Slavin, because Jacob Slavin's probably going to make $10 million, and deservedly so. Jacob Slavin is a top 10 defenseman. Burns is going to get a pay decrease as time goes on. But for me, this shows that it is clearly Brady Shea's last year in the NHL. I think Brady Shea will be done with Car his run in Carolina after this season. I have liked Brady Shea. It's not that I'm happy he's gone. I'm content with Brady Shea having his last year. I hope Brett Pesci can stay. But Carolina has three out of four top four defensemen. Top four defensemen are a little bit harder to get. But they can definitely absorb the loss in the coming years of Brett Pesci and Brady Shea for sure. Brady Shea is going to be one of the best top six defensemen for Carolina. And then he's going to go elsewhere. Ranta, I think it's his last season after this one. But I'm glad to see Ranta come back. He's a fan favorite here and rightfully so. The big question mark for me now is that second line center. I think if you demote George Stahl down to fourth line center, Kokaniemi down to third line center, Carolina is really good in their top six. I think goal scoring is still an issue, but they have sandpaper now. Michael Bunting adds a lot of that. Martinuk has that, and Steven Nason can have that. Jordan Stahl is really good. I don't know if Jordan Stahl is a fourth line center type player, but if Carolina can bring in a second line center that can score goals and really kind of make up for the fact that Natchez can struggle in the playoffs. Jarvis is still really young. Tara Vinen can't really score in the playoffs either. They're going to be set. Now, Tara Vinen, of course, got injured, so not a lot you can do about that. He might be better next year in the playoffs, but Carolina, I think Kakaniemi will get to a second-line center one day. He's my age in two to three years. If he's still at the same skill level, I may change my opinion. But for right now, Kakaniemi, second-line center of the future, or at least a really good third-line center. But Carolina does need a second-line center, in my opinion. Now, they can package either a Brady Shea or a Jack Drury to do it. Maybe they make a move at the trade deadline. Svechnikov is going to be on IR for until December. But, so I would prefer they do that then, just to make sure they get off to a good start this coming season, because Svechnikov being gone does hurt. But it hasn't hurt. Carolina's managed to absorb the loss of Svechnikov decently effective in the playoffs and the regular season. Uh, it just came back to bite them when they come up against a hot goaltender in Poprovsky this year and Shesterkin last year. But other than that, all around good moves by Carolina. They killed it with free agency. Played it safe at the draft, which if you can't get a lot for your first round pick, I think you should always do. Adding prospects is never a bad thing. But yeah, Carolina, I think, are in a position to make a push. I don't think on a cup-winning team, Kakaniemi is there yet as a second-line center. Their defense is set. They may want to move on for Pesci to not lose him for nothing. Brady Shea, I think they lose for nothing, but that's fine. Brady Shea was a good, solid hurricane. And he will be this year, unless they trade package him with Jarek Jury to move him somewhere. I mean, the rumor is Eric Carlson. I don't see the need to bring in Eric Carlson. But... You know, I think you tra you draft best player available, that's where you kind of accumulate, and then you trade to improve what your team needs. Now, I mean, that being said, if Slavin Carlson will be a best D pair in the league, and then you have 
looks like Orlov Burns and then Pesci Shea maybe uh, but yeah t and then Tony D'Angelo would probably be a Chicago Wolf or well we don't have the Chicago Wolves anymore would be in the AHL if that happens which I'm sure would make a lot of certain Twitter Hurricane fan members happy I wouldn't mind it but yeah, that, that's really all Carolina's done so far. I really think they nailed this free agency. Trade to fill in one hole up front. Maybe another guy with sandpaper to be uh, help, to be depth. You know, a couple more guys to be depth that are assholes, you know, but they got an asshole on the ice this year. Carolina, I'm really liking what they're doing this offseason, which is crazy because normally their offseasons are wild and then they end up getting better last year. When they brought in Burns, it really worked out. And then 2019, I think, was another chaotic one. I'm a little bit nervous in that I've liked what they're doing this offseason. But only time will tell. They are setting themselves up in a very good position here. So, yeah, if you guys like the content I'm producing on the channel, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And on the next edition of Corky's Corner, we'll talk. The Hurricanes will come up again, probably. But we'll be talking about the draft and free agency as a whole and that free agency league wide so new jersey with tyler to foley acquisition will come up there um trying to think of other big moves because carolina's really made a lot of big moves and it's overshadowed everything for me now but <laughs> don't worry we'll cover more than the hurricanes on corky's corner connor brown to edmonton my dad definitely will have comments on that so tune into corky's con corner to talk about league wide what's gone down taylor hall we'll probably get more into taylor hall becoming a chicago blackhawk Corey perry is now a chicago blackhawk so yeah talk about that as a whole don't forget to hit like share and subscribe click the bell to be notified when i get uploaded as we continue to cover things twitter is down so they're like who knows maybe carolina just acquired connor bedard for aho and svechnikov you know and i just i can't see it yet but that probably didn't happen don't take that with news i doubt that happened but if any other big Canes news came up, I can't see it for a while um, just because Twitter's down. But yeah, that's it for this one. And I'm wearing this jersey because I probably won't get other a lot of chances to wear it in the video with it only being a reverse retro for this year. I got Svechnikov with the 37. Um, so yeah, all in all, solid free agency for Carolina. See you guys on Monday for next for the next edition of Corky's Corner.